you're a public company and looking for a way to tell your story to millions of online investors. Welcome to Agoracom, North America's largest online investor relations firm. We deliver investor relations through the web's biggest sites and search engines to help you find new investors. In addition to those websites, over 1 million investors read over 95 million pages of news and information on Agoracom this year. Agoracom, where smart public companies and investors click. Good morning. It is Wednesday, October the 29th, and you're watching Agoracom Small Cap News TV. I'm your host, Paul Kandakos. Agoracom TV is a daily, fast-paced, five-minute show bringing you the best headlines at the open along with the halt so that you can hopefully profit from them and potentially find your next great small cap investment. As always, I've got a great show lined up for you this morning. I've got five great press releases to report on from both sides of the borders, and I have one halt to report on at this time. So without any further ado, let us get down to business. Our top story this morning comes out of the company called Star Navigation Systems Group. They trade on the TSX Venture under the symbol S. And A, the company is announcing an MOU, which is a Memorandum of Understanding, with the Chinese government manufacturer. Now, what does Star Navigation do? They're a leading edge technology company focused on providing aerospace solutions to aviation operators worldwide. They've announced today that they're in discussions with an undisclosed state-owned avionics corporation in China with respect to forming a strategic relationship. A MOU has been signed and the terms and the conditions of a detailed collaborative framework agreement, also CFA, have been agreed upon by the parties. What that means now is that star personnel are presently traveling to China to sign the CFA or the collaborative framework agreement at the Zhuhai Air Show in Guangdong, China. Uh, we've got a quote from Mr. Varaf Kapadia, who's the CEO of Star, who stated, After several months of effort, we are very excited at this opportunity. China is a strategic region for us, and we will continue to pursue it ambitiously. This Chinese initiative complements our other ongoing efforts in the region. So congratulations to Star Navigation and Veraf. Great news coming out of the company this morning. A little bit about Star Navigation. They own the exclusive worldwide license to its proprietary patented in-flight safety monitoring system, which is the first system in the world to feature in-flight data analysis, monitoring, and diagnostics with a real-time connection between aircraft and the ground. The company is last at six and a half cents, 52 week high, low high of 26 cents, low of three cents, and the market cap that currently stands at approximately five and a half million dollars. Moving on, Yankee Hat Minerals, they trade on the TSX Venture under the symbol KHT. Uh, the company is announcing uh, that they've made high-grade tungsten discovery in, Kidlark, uh, in their Kidlark project in the Yukon. Disclaimer time, Yankee Hat is an Agoracom client. Yankee Hat's joint venture with Jockmec yields significant results in the first year, and the surf, uh, surface sampling has returned high-grade tungsten assay results. Of note is that it lies less than 20 kilometers northeast of Livingston, which is an active placer gold operational area serviced by an active airstrip and has winter road access so they can continue to drill year-round. 18 grab samples were taken from the Kidlark property and submitted to Ecotech Laboratories and Whitehorse for testing. Assay results for the samples ranged up to 7.68% tungsten oxide and averaged 1.46% of tungsten oxide with visual estimations of ski light content by UV fluorescence correlating well with the tungsten oxide percent content. So that's uh, big numbers coming out of there, 7.68 tungsten oxide. Uh, this is based on the promising initial exploration results. Yankee Hat has expanded the property by staking an additional 70 claims, which brings the total number of claims to 102 with rough dimensions of 13 kilometers by 2 kilometers and an area of approximately 2,100 hectares. Now, a little bit of background about tungsten. China currently produces roughly 85% of the world's tungsten and has recently begun to restrict foreign access to the tungsten it produces. With China hoarding <coughs> excuse me, its production for its growth, the rest of the world is scrambling to find new sources of supply as prices move upwards. So this is one to take a look at, Yankee Hat Minerals and their tungsten supply. A little bit about Yankee Hat. They're a resource company that utilizes its management expertise in mineral exploration and evaluation and financial acumen to identify, acquire, and develop mineral properties in mining friendly jurisdictions with the potential to host large scale discoveries. The company's last at four cents, 52 week high low, 21 cents, low of three cents, and the market cap of approximately three million dollars. 
Moving on to Hanna Mining, former Agora compliant. They trade on the venture under the symbol HMG and also for our European friends on the Frankfurt under the symbol 4LH. <coughs> uh, Hanna is reporting this morning that seven more percussion holes from their new discovery at its sediment hosted Ganzi Copper Silver project in Botswana. They've added 1,500 meters strike length to their new discovery, and I've got highlights from their program this morning, which includes hole number HA08-P, which returned an intercept of 27 meters containing 1.1% copper and 25 grams per ton of silver, so great numbers there. We've also got within that same hole a more concentrated intercept of 12 meters containing 2.36% copper and 52.2 grams per ton of silver. So great numbers coming out of Hannah this morning. Hannah is a junior exploration company seeking to acquire, explore, and develop highly prospective precious base metal and other mineral projects worldwide with emphasis in southern Africa. The company's last at 16 cents, 52-week high low, high of 78, low of 14 cents, and the market cap of approximately $6.5 million. We're now moving over to the U.S. side. I've got two press releases from the U.S. Our first one is Intelligroup. They trade on the OTC BB under the symbol ITIG. The company is announcing operating results for its third quarter and nine months ended September 30th, 2008. As well as the authorization by the company's board of directors, uh, sorry, uh, in addition, the company is announcing that the board of directors has announced the repurchase of up to $5 million of the company's common stock to be funded by the company's working capital. Uh, we've got revenues from Q308, which increased 8.4% to $41 million compared to $38 million in Q307. We've got Q308 gross profits, which increased to $12.9 million, uh, which is a gross margin of 31.3%, compared to Q307 gross profit of $11.1 million and a gross margin of 29.1%. Uh, we've got Q3 operating margins, which increased to 9.4%, compared to 5.5% in the previous year's quarter. And in addition, the company's announced that notwithstanding the impact of foreign exchange loss versus a foreign exchange gain in the year ago period, Q308 net, uh, net income of this year was 2.7 million, compared with last year's net income of 2.6 million. So they still ended up ahead, even though they lost on the exchange this year and they gained on the exchange last year. Uh, Intellogroup is an ERP-focused enterprise application system integrator providing consulting, implementation, testing, application management, and other IT services for global corporations. The last at $1.35, 52-week high of $2.95, 52-week low of $1.21, and a mark cap that currently stands at approximately $57 million. And finally, I've got ARI Network Services. They trade on the OTCBB under the symbol ARIS. Their reporting results for their fourth fiscal quarter and fiscal year ended Ju uh, July 31st, 2008. They've reported record revenues and increased net income for fiscal 08. So I've got full year 08 highlights, which include revenues that increased approximately 9.6% to a record 16.9 million for fiscal 08, from revenues of 15.4 million for fiscal 07. <coughs> Excuse me. Operating income was $821,000 for fiscal 08, which is a 398% increase from operating income of $165,000 for the prior year. Net income was $1.4 million, compared to net income of $101,000 for fiscal 2007, so big increase there. Uh, and I've also got the fourth quarter 08 highlights. Revenue increased approximately 4.9% to $4.3 million, up from $4.1 million. Operating loss was 236000 for the fourth quarter, compared to an operating loss of 154000 for the same period prior. Net income was $378,000, compared to a net loss of $167,000 for the previous year. So great numbers coming out of ARI this morning. Uh, what do they do? They're a leading provider of electronic parts catalogs and marketing services to dealers, distributors, and manufacturers in the manufactured equipment markets. The companies last at 89 cents, 52 week high of $1.95, a low of 60 cents, and a mark cap of approximately $6 million. Moving on to the next segment of our program, halts. I've only got one halt to report on at this time. They're an Agoracom client. They're called Slam Exploration. They trade on the venture under the symbol SXL, and they've been halted pending news. 
news. Now, for anybody that's interested in stock halts, please go visit our friends at stockhalt.com. They announce when a company is being halted, and they also send you notifications when the company is resumed. What that is, it gives you competitive intelligence so that you can trade these halts properly and make some money while you're doing it. That's a wrap for today's show. I'm your host, Paul Kandakos. Make sure you tune in again tomorrow. We've got more great press releases and halts at the open for you.